What's up everybody, this is Danny and it's about that time. Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra versus the iPhone 15 Pro Max video camera comparison. So the photo comparison is coming very soon, as soon as I get home. But I wanted to do something here from San Jose because I know a lot of people are wondering, did Samsung do enough to the video to take that video crown from the iPhone? Because right now, the iPhone still has the best video on a smartphone. So let's see, did Samsung do enough? Let's get to it. Let's start with the daytime video and look at how similar the colors look on both of these phones. Samsung has come a long way so they're definitely going in the right direction and the 2x crop really shows how close these two phones are now. And I do love the fact that you have a 3x optical option for video where the iPhone 15 Pro Max specifically does not have that so flexibility is what you're going to gain with the S24 Ultra. The 5x video is great on the S24 Ultra so I'm happy to report that. A little cleaner in this scenario compared to the iPhone but both look fantastic. There is the 10x video and I'm always impressed with the iPhone's 10x digital zoom but it's definitely noisier but this is closer than it should be. And here is the iPhone's maximum video zoom at 15x versus the S24 Ultra's 20x zoom just so you can see it. That 15x again looks super solid from the iPhone. It's impressive. So here's a screen recording of both of these phones so you can see what it's like on screen to show you how smooth the zoom is on both of these phones. The S24 Ultra does have a bigger range of zoom as you can see from the ultra wide all the way up to 10x on the interface itself which is great. But I did notice that on the 5x the contrast is bumped up and it looks really good and it looks better than the iPhone in this scenario so they do go back and forth sometimes so results may vary. I had to do a red color test during the day and it looks like the iPhone still does a better job with color replication. I think a lot of this is still overexposure of the midtones on Samsung and that's why I say this because check this out. If I pull down the midtones in post, look at how much better that looks. So software should be able to improve this greatly. Let's do a walking video test and this will give you a good idea of the stabilization across all of the lenses. The ultra wide video is stable while walking on both. When switching to the main lens, you can see how Samsung has backed off the sharpness quite heavily, but going into the 2x crop, you can see that does come at a loss of detail, so I hope Samsung tunes this up in the next software update. It also looks like the OIS is slightly smoother on the iPhone and 2x crop, but going into the 5x video, this is strictly just to check out the optical image stabilization on the 5x telephoto while walking, and most people won't be doing this anyway, so I'm not sure how important this is. And while both of them have the jelly effect and both look pretty rocky, the iPhone seems to keep it steadier. And the 10x, I wouldn't suggest using that while you are walking on the S24 Ultra. It's common sense, but I had to test it. The Galaxy S24 Ultra does have 8K video support, but the colors and characteristics look the same as the 4K video. You will notice on the S24 Ultra, it does have brighter highlights. Take a look at this building. It looks brighter and it's almost on the realm of clipping, but most of the details are still there. What's super impressive about the iPhone's 4K video is the amount of detail there is. When you crop into a ridiculous 1000% scale crop, the S24 Ultra video definitely still retains more detail, but that is closer than I thought it would be, but you do get an advantage with the S24 Ultra in sheer resolution. Zooming into the building, this is what I meant about the brightness and clipping possibilities, so I hope to see this adjusted on the next software update across the video. I had to test the 8K versus 4K video multiple times just to make sure that my results were correct, but if you don't crop in, the iPhone's video actually looks sharper than the 8K video on the Samsung, but I think that has a lot to do with Samsung listening to direct feedback about bringing down the sharpening on their video, which I appreciate. So this is much better for working with in post if you're using 8K footage to put into production, but I wouldn't blame you for liking the iPhone's more dramatic interpretation of the contrast differences and details, but what's funny is if you want more of that dramatic look and sharpness, the 4K video from the S24 Ultra gives you that, so I think 4K video still is the best way to go for most users. The one thing I did notice on daytime video is that the iPhone 15 Pro Max is still doing a better job at balancing dynamic range and detail across bright scenarios like the sky here. The clouds are clearly visible where on the S24 Ultra it's less dramatic. Even panning up to change the metering of the scenario, it does get better on the S24 Ultra, but the balance of the entire scene is better on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The sun behind the building is extremely tough for any smartphone, but the sun is more clearly visible on the iPhone and retains more detail and maintains the color tone here, so I hope to see dynamic range tuning on video in the next update from Samsung. 
Portrait mode video does get an upgrade on the S24 Ultra because it is using the main and the ultra wide cameras together to capture more accurate depth information. While the iPhone does lock onto faces, the S24 Ultra was able to cut out my hand, so that is impressive to see. I didn't adjust anything because this is the way that both of these are by default, but I definitely suggest backing off the bokeh effect slightly. I think they both look too aggressive on the blur, but the thing I want to see improved is the skin tone. My skin tone looks off, and I think that it has a lot to do with the white balance but very yellow on my skin i had to do this test one more time and while the iphone really likes to add red to the skin and that needs to be improved on the apple side of things it is really clipping john's skin on the s24 ultra and again the amount of yellow introduced to the skin needs to be adjusted from the results of the initial software here is the macro mode video and it's hard to get it exactly on the same spot because I'm holding both of these phones in my hand, but they can both get really close on the subject. So details are pretty insane on both, but the iPhone seems to be adjusting the overall details and color better, but I had to get it to a more fair scenario. I just used the wall next to it. For example, you can see the level of contrast and detail the iPhone is picking up. So very different processing between both of them, but it looks like the iPhone can get closer on macro mode. So if you're into this, this mode, the iPhone is the way to go. Both of these phones have 4K 60 frames per second, and this is on a 4K 30 frames per second timeline, so you do get some higher quality slow motion or just ultra smooth video if you like to record that way. But the Galaxy S24 Ultra this year gets 4K 120 frames per second in pro video mode, and here's what it looks like slowed down. So that is some fantastic slow motion that you can use. So that's a great addition to the camera. I can't wait to use this more. All right, so let's jump into nighttime video on the Galaxy S24 Ultra and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So let me know which one you think looks better. And if I'm looking at the screen, it looks like the iPhone is a little bit cleaner here, a little bit brighter on the Galaxy S24 Ultra though, but let me know what you think. Let's first get this out of the way. Yeah, there are still light reflections and green orbs on the iPhone 15 Pro Max video, so it is what it is. They did improve it slightly since the last phone, but it's clearly still there, so it's a reality when it comes to shooting nighttime video on the iPhone. I don't see it as much during the day, but you can definitely notice it more on the nighttime video. What I do like is that Samsung listened to direct feedback and addressed the noise in the nighttime video, and you can see that they definitely improved here. The sky is black, the scene looks like nighttime, and they're closer than ever at this point. When you punch in, you can see that noise reduction at work if you look at the tree, where the iPhone keeps that tree more intact, and then when you punch into the foreground, the iPhone does retain more detail across the entire frame. So I hope Samsung sees this and tunes it for the next camera update, but I do know that it has something to do with software because in this scenario, it looks like the Galaxy S24 Ultra is retaining a little bit more detail. When you punch in, you can see that a little bit better. It is hard to beat the iPhone at video because the detail is almost hyper exaggerated. Take a look at the cobblestone. So it will be personal preference on what you like. Here the detail is comparable or even better, so consistency can be improved, but when it comes to what was more accurate here, that is the Galaxy S24 Ultra. The iPhone brightens up the scenario, but Samsung keeps it looking more like what I was seeing in real life, and this was the exact same thing on the S23 Ultra, so this is no surprise. I did test the video indoors, and this is what sometimes accuracy and better looking video has clashing results. This room was definitely super warm in colors, and the S24 Ultra definitely captured it more accurately, but that extra contrast and warmer tone hypersaturated the skin tone, so while the iPhone video is not accurate, it balanced it more for usable looking video and watching it back, so let me know what you think about this. When it comes to food though, look at how that extra saturation and contrast make that food absolutely pop and the food looks so much more appetizing watching it back. And you do get better minimum focusing distance on the S24 Ultra on the main lens, so foodie creators will definitely appreciate this. When we got done with dinner, we went to a more mixed lighting scenario outside and this still showed the same outcome. The Galaxy S24 Ultra definitely is the more accurate capture, but here it looks better. So nighttime videos going in the right direction, just backing off that red tone slightly could make this perfect. Let's go ahead and do a couple more tests. Of course, I had to test the red color replication at night. The Coca-Cola building test is coming on the next video, but hey, this will work. And wow, I'm impressed. When the majority of the frame is red, this is so much better. So respect to Samsung on improving this. But you know I had to do a zoom test at night, and I'm going to switch the lenses so you can see the difference between all of the steps. But what I wanted to pay attention to is the AMC IMAX sign. 
And when going into the 5X telephoto video, you can see that the iPhone does a better job of replicating that red on the sign. But what's crazy is when you jump into the 10X zoom, that changes. So both cameras have consistency improvements that they can work on. I did want to test the 5X video more because the sensor is larger on the S24 Ultra and it should equal to cleaner video and it does capture the sign from across the street better. In some scenarios like this, it isn't clearly visible, but if you're watching this on a large screen device like a TV, look around the text and look at the difference with noise and clarity. The extra contrast and color help this look more like night video as stated before. That also helps with noise as well, so let me know which one that you prefer. While the noise reduction can be seen on the Bark, the overall 5X video is nice on the S24 Ultra, so this is what you have to look forward to at night. Portrait mode video at night is weird on the iPhone. Most of the time, even in moderate low light like this, you'll get the more light required warning, but you can see sometimes it does activate cinematic mode, but if you wanna use this feature more at night, the Galaxy S24 Ultra might be the better choice. So after looking at all of this, I'm glad that Samsung has improved the video, but the iPhone is hard to beat in this category. I do like seeing the improvements in the ultra wide video, especially at night, the detail, the noise level, it does look so much better. And I'm going to leave you with this second zoom test. But during the daytime, I think that the iPhone still has better video. But nighttime is a wild card where I think Samsung with some optimizations can come out on top if consistency can be achieved. Regardless, I like the way that things are going with video and the S24 Ultra looks promising. So let me know what you guys think. If you're pre-ordering this device, please check the description of this video to get the best trade-in pricing. And if you enjoyed this video, consider using those links to support the channel. There's so much more coming on the S24 Ultra, so make sure you subscribe, hit that like button for me, and I will see you in the next one.